Potsdam police are now calling the death of 12-year-old Garrett Phillips a homicide. The killer of a 12-year-old Potsdam boy continues to walk free. Police say they have no suspects. By the time 12-year-old Garrett Phillips is buried in the family plot, his ripstick skateboard by his side, the people of Potsdam, New York are up in arms. They are demanding a suspect, an arrest, justice for Garrett. Very quickly, too quickly, some will later say, police zero in on a suspect. Dan, what's up? Marky. The morning after Garrett's death, lead investigator Lieutenant Mark Murray speaks with the DA's office. We got some strong feelings about certain people, or one person. There's one person in particular we want to talk to. Did police ask you who would want to harm your son? Yes. I kind of was like, you know, everybody liked Garrett, and you know, no one ever had a problem with Garrett, and then... It's like, oh, there was one person that had an issue with Garrett. Just one? Just one. Who was it? Nick. Nick Hillary? Yes. Tandy had ended her relationship with Nick Hillary just a month before her son was murdered. First of all, who, whose idea was the breakup? Um, I mean, the idea was bought a force. I mean, I... I, I she says it. she was the one who broke up. Um, I, I think it was the two of... We, we made a, a decision. He made a lot of attempts to get me to change my mind. Tandy says she broke up with Nick because of friction over how to parent her two sons. A lot of Nick's rules started getting enforced as far as there was no TV during the week for the kids at all. No, no. How did that rule go over? Not very well. Did you ever see Nick lose his temper with your children? Uh, he never really disciplined my children. So you never saw him strike any child? No. Or threaten any child? No. But Tandy says Garrett eventually didn't want to be around Nick, so she decided to move out. I told him that my kids weren't happy and I wasn't going to stay in a relationship where my kids were miserable. What was his reaction? He thought that I was letting them make my decisions for me. There are people who say now that the reason you and Tandy broke up was because Garrett wanted you out of the house. Not true. You're saying there wasn't tension between you and Garrett? No, no. That you didn't argue? No, we didn't. No, we didn't. But look at some of the text messages Tandy sent Nick. I've been waiting for almost a year for the feeling and situation between you and my kids to get better, and it's not. This is not easy for me either, but I have to put my kids first. Yes, it is about the boys. He blamed my son for our relationship ending. For losing you. And he didn't want to lose you. No. Tandy's suspicion of her ex-boyfriend is shared by the police. Good kick, Eduardo. The night after the murder, Lieutenant Murray hides in a crowd of soccer fans, secretly shooting this video of Nick. Were you aware that police officers were at the game videotaping you? Absolutely no clue. You know that if they were videotaping you 24 hours later, you were already prime suspect, number one. Yes. The next morning, it's the police again. They told me, hey, you have to come downtown. Did you ask why? And they says, well, you know, we, we would like for you to assist us with the Garrett's case. And I says, okay, no problem. Nick says he voluntarily goes to the police station. How long had you gone out with? 2020 has obtained this video of Potsdam detectives interviewing Nick two days after the murder. Here you go, Nick. Thanks, appreciate it. Prosecutors say some of his behavior is suspicious. Not exactly a smoking gun, just smoking. Hillary's a chain smoker, and they gave him opportunity to smoke three different cigarettes. You smoked some cigarettes while you were in the police station. Yes. What did you do with the butts of those cigarettes? Some of the butts put down the sink. He doesn't want them to get his DNA. You sure that's what he was doing? Maybe he's just really <laughs> neat or something. Maybe he's I don't just know. a neat freak. <laughs> Elizabeth, whatever you say. <laughs> but pretty obvious to me what he was doing. Nick says he doesn't realize anything is wrong for about an hour until he tries to leave. Will you show me outside, Do you want to sit down? At that point in time, they barred the door. They physically blocked it? Physically stood in the doorway and told me, look, you are not going 
anywhere. Well, you're, you're going to be held on here for a minute anyway. I was read my Miranda rights, and that's when I know. Nick says police held him against his will all day long. Armed with a search warrant from a judge, they take his pants, his sweatshirt, and, he says, in a final humiliation, even his underwear. They pretty much stripped me naked as the day I was born. They took all of your clothes? Everything was taken. All I left there with was in an hazmat suit. A hazmat suit? A hazmat suit. That's what I was released from the station. Nick is released, not arrested, and for good reason. Actually, two good reasons. Two alibi witnesses. At the time of the killing, his then 15-year-old daughter, Shauna, says he was home with her. And right after, assistant coach Ian Fairley says Nick stopped by his place. How did he look to you? He looked like he was always did. Kind of athletic clothes, getting ready for practice. Normal? Yeah. Not sweaty, not disheveled? No. Yeah, I mean, absolutely not. Was he limping? Nope. State and local police scour the crime scene for three days. We didn't get any evidence from the items that were tested by the, the forensic uh, center in Albany. No hairs, no fibers, right. really nothing. A smidgen of DNA under Garrett's fingernail is too little to be useful, the lab says. But then, in a CSI moment, crime scene techs find one, two, three, four fingerprints, of all places, right on that window through which the killer escaped. But the prints do not belong to Nick Hillary. Whoever had their hands on that rear window, police are never able to identify them. We interviewed Nick Hillary earlier this year. Why do you think there's this depth of fervor to get you? Because I think I have crossed the line of being a black man, honestly. Do you think it's all about race? It is. I sincerely think it's all about race. One unsettling year passes here in the North Country, and then another. Nick Hillary is not arrested, and neither is anyone else. It's been nearly two years. No arrests have been made, yet the family holds on to hope that one day the person responsible will be brought to justice. But the prime suspect is about to turn the tables on the police. Still ahead, Nick Hillary's payback. And then a Hollywood producer enters the picture. How much are you willing to spend? As much as it takes.